Welcome all to Eat, Drink and Explore with Cece. Today we are doing follow along with me on the Formula One cooking circuit and they are in round 15 and it is in Brussels this weekend and I thought we would do it one of their most beloved national dishes and it is a vatazo. And what is vatazo? It is a dish that is a mixture of a vegetable soup with a chicken dinner all combined. So where is Brussels? They're located up in, uh, they're located along the North Sea and uh, they are bordered by the Netherlands up on the north side. On the east side they've got Germany and then they have France. Those are the major borders in there and I believe they're also bordered by Luxembourg. And what we're going to be doing is we're doing a dish that is located in the Flanders section of uh, of Belgium and that would be predominantly the Dutch area because Brussels is bordered by the Netherlands and France and Germany and they have been over the years over the centuries they have been conquered by the French by the Dutch by the Germans by the Vikings by the Spaniards and so they've incorporated a lot of the different cultures in their cuisine and cooking as well so the Valtes the Valtesos is a famous uh, dish that was um, invented going back into like the uh, 16th century and through there and it originally had fish in it as opposed to chicken but as the Ghent River got polluted what happened was is they replaced the fish with the chicken but as you can imagine you've you got breeze is coming off the North Sea, it's cold, it's damp, and this type of soup is just perfect for that type of weather. Um, and it's so flavorful just to have with some toasted crusty bread, that's all you need. So let's go through and uh, discuss what we have on, on deck here. So I made this beautiful uh, chicken stock here from poaching the chicken and that you're going to need between five to eight cups depending on how much you want to make and then I poached some chicken I, I like to use for this recipe the dark meat as opposed to the chicken breasts so I have I have three quarter uh, three chicken quarters so three legs and, and the thighs uh, when I poach this and I'll put on um, up at the top right there's a link here where I'm showing you how to poach the chicken so that ends up making about three cups of chicken now the way the dish is served is they will serve it with the chicken with the bone in the chicken and you end up eating it like a dinner with a knife and fork I just find it very awkward to eat that way so I basically removed the bones off the chicken because I definitely used a bone in when I did the, the, the poaching removed the bones and removed the skins from it um, so I got all the flavor in the broth I don't have to worry about fiddling around with that while I'm eating. And then I'm here, I have a five potatoes. I, I just I just peeled them and made them big chunks, right? You, you don't want to finely dice this, just big chunks. So that's five, um, uh, five medium size uh, Yukon potatoes. So you could do five or six, it's up to you. And then I took one large leek, washed it and julienned as much as I possibly could on that. So that's gonna have some beautiful garlicky onion flavor to the dish and I have three celery stalks and one large carrot so if your carrots are tiny and thin you probably need about three but I had one massive large one that was the size of the carrot that I had <laughs> so that's quite large so if you got smaller ones you can sort of gauge it in there um, so two to three to do that and I cut them in juliennes and then I cut that in half as well and through there so salt and pepper to taste we're going to do a pinch of nutmeg and we have one cup of cream so you can use if you really want to get decadent go with the whipping cream or you could do half and half cream this happens to be a 10% half and half or you could do 5% cream definitely don't want to do milk you need that richness from it we're gonna need some thyme and some parsley again that's to taste it's up to you and we're gonna need two eggs to enrich the cream and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that and how we temper it before we add it to the dish so 
we're going to move over to the stove and we're going to find a pot that's going to be big enough to hold all of this. That's a super important because you're holding about eight cups, right? Between five to eight cups of liquid plus another cup of that. So, and plus all the vegetables. So you want to make sure your pot is big enough to handle all of this stuff. Okay. So I found a nice big pot and I'm not going to be using olive oil in this dish. I'm using butter to saute the vegetables because remember we're doing Belgium and that's the north and they do not necessarily have olive groves. Yes, they can import it, but they have a lot of cows and a lot of milk. So let's melt that down. We're going to saute the vegetables and then we're going to put everything together in a pot and then simmer that down with all the flavors sort of amalgamate. I'm going to add in the heart of vegetables first. So I'm going to add in the carrots. And the celery. And then we'll salt it as we go along. Now, if these uh, juliennes are too big for you, you can cut those in half. Um, but I kind of like them big. Pinch of salt. And I'm salting as I go along to taste. And the same thing with a little bit of pepper. Remember I told you that salt and pepper is a very personal thing. You know, some days your palate uh, picks up salt really a lot, and some other days it doesn't. So, you know, trying to give you, like, you got to use a teaspoon of salt. Um, it could be very salty to you one day, or it could be very undersalted. So, oh, and one of the things I forgot to mention when I was going through the ingredients, I've also got some flour as the thickening agent. So we're going to dilute that and make a slurry. And I'll show you that when we come along. So let that go for a bit. Now you don't want to over saute these. You want to keep it with a little bit of a crunch. Isn't that gorgeous color? Look at that. I love the celadon green. Try to separate. There's different ways of making this dish in Belgium. It's, it's uh, very personal. Uh, everyone has their own way of doing it, but this is a generic one. I have seen people make this recipe by adding a parsnip. So they would add a little bit of carrot, orange carrot, but then also add parsnip instead. I couldn't find parsnip, so that's more of a fall vegetable. So lovely, the colors. So we're going to add in the potatoes. You can see how hearty this uh, soup chicken dinner is going to be. And the star of the show here is that homemade chicken broth that I did by poaching the chicken. I mean, you can cut up a whole chicken, whole chicken with its carcass and everything, and poach your chicken that way and then cut it up. And traditionally, they would add in the uh, giblets in here. And uh, Julia Child has a recipe for the uh, Ovatzu sauce, the chicken basu sauce, in one of her cookbooks, it's called the French Cook, the French Chef's Cookbook, uh, published in like 1968, and uh, she goes through the entire process of doing this, and I'm going to, she uses a lot of cream, oh my, I've definitely cut down the cream on this, you can tell it's just a different era. But I love my Julia. Okay, so we're starting to get some color. We don't want too much color on the vegetables, remember? Because we don't want to brown the soup. We're going to add in the chicken. And when I sort of 
actually boned the chicken and shredded it. I left it very, very chunky. Again, you can make this dish stretch by adding more potatoes, more vegetables, and less meat. If you're cooking for a large family, I know that things get expensive nowadays. So that's another way that you can stretch the meal and still have a really gourmet experience. You're going to put in a pinch of nutmeg. And the nutmeg adds a beautiful woodsy homey fat flavor. I'm going to add in the chicken stock. See why you needed a bigger pot? You wanted to make sure it could fold everything. So I'm putting in five cups. All right, so we're going to simmer that. You want to bring this up. Look at that. Look at the beautiful color of that of that homemade stock broth. Look at that. Mmm, smells really, really good. Now, in Julia Child's recipe, she does add vermouth, but I am ignoring that. I'm not putting that in here. I just replaced it with more chicken stock. We put a cup of vermouth. One less cup of stock and a cup of vermouth if that's what you would like. And if you are going to add the vermouth, you want to add that in while you're sauteing your vegetables because you want to evaporate the, the alcohol. And I'm going to taste the broth for seasoning. A little bit more salt. Because when I poached the chicken, I undersalted it because when I poach chicken, I like to poach a whole bunch of it and then I keep it in the fridge to do different recipes. So I don't want to necessarily over salt it. So the whole trick here is you want to bring the liquid to boil, which is you're just making sure that your potatoes are fork tender. And then when they're fork tender, we'll add in the cream. So we'll come back to this. So we're just going to test the potatoes, make sure that's fork tender. Perfect. Okay. So the next step is I turned the stove right down to a low simmer. So we're going to add two thirds of the cream into this recipe and we're going to save one third. And so what I did off camera is I took one tablespoon of flour and I took several tablespoons of the stock from the pot and I created a slurry. This is going to be the thickener. So you can see that's nice and thick already. And what I like to do is I like to go through a sieve. I'm trying to avoid any lumps. You can see there was some stuff in there. So we just kind of mix this in. It's the European version of chicken and dumplings, except there's no dumplings in this one. But this, this broth is so flavorful. Oh, it's incredible. So let's simmer this for about 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, it doesn't need salt. Doesn't need pepper, it's just right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to separate the eggs. We're gonna need two egg yolks. Two egg yolks. So what we wanna do now is mix in the remaining cream. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to temper the eggs with the liquid from the soup and slowly bring the eggs up to temperature. A little bit of liquid, add it in. And what you're doing is you're trying to bring the temperature of the egg to the same temperature as the liquid that you're going to add it to. I'd rather take my time with this than have the eggs curdle in the soup. 
take a little bit in. Because I whisked the egg yolk and the cream together, I added, I did introduce some air in to the mixture. So that also is helpful. So you can see the foam there. This looks so yummy. The broth is the liquid gold in this. What I like to do is add in some parsley and add in some thyme. Just want the leaves. And this thyme that I'm adding in, I had in my garden and it's um, called a lemon thyme. And it has this beautiful citrus fragrance to it. I have a big batch of thyme growing in a pot outside. You know how we all tend to gravitate to certain herbs. <laughs> I love ras uh, rosemary and thyme. Oh, I remember that TV show, an old British TV show, where you had these gardeners and they were detective sleuths <laughs> called Rosemary and Thyme. It was a great show. I got my gardening fix with my detective fix <laughs> all in one show. It was quite funny. Oh. Wow. I can't wait to try this. Oh. Mm. All right. I imagine that in a bowl with some crusty bread. Mm. I picked up a loaf of uh, Belgium bread, which is sort of like a rye, but not quite a rye, not quite a sourdough, but it has that density to it. This is the Belgium bread that I picked up. It's really nice. Uh, I picked it up at Metro. Uh, ba their bakery always has it. Okay, so let's plate this. Doesn't this look so good? This is a meal in itself. So now you know why I took it off the bone, because I don't necessarily want to sit here and eat it with a knife and fork. I really don't want to do that. I want to be able to use a spoon because everything is being cooked down that you can pick up with a spoon. Look at that. Look at the colors on that. And that's a nice meal for a person. That and some bread and you are good to go. Oh, that looks so inviting. So there you have it, folks. The Belgium national dish called Vatazo and it is the chicken based one it is a soup a vegetable soup with poached chicken on it it is luscious it's filling it's aromatic i mean the broth is so aromatic this is something that i keep in my rotation all the time it's something different than doing chicken noodle soup all the time and it has that same warm consistency that you're looking for when you're trying to have chicken noodle soup so there you have it hope you enjoyed it and uh, this is round 15 for the belgium uh, grand prix at spa frankenstein and um let's see who wins this year i mean last year it was the standard. It was Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Leclerc. Oh, and Hamilton came in fourth. Let's see if can, Hamilton can come in, at least in uh, the podium. That would be awesome. So once again, thank you for joining me. It's always greatly appreciated. If you like this button, show us some love. Hit that like button. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. We are trying to grow this channel so that we can give you more videos like this, where you can travel the world through a different recipe every time that I put out there. You can experience experience the different flavors and different ways of cooking that pe other people do around the world. I'd love to share that with you. It's one of the things that I love to do and I want to share it. So hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notified when we post more videos. And on that note, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Ciao for now. Hello, Roth, can you tell? I thought what we would do is something 
fun and uh, make one of their beloved national dishes called Geist Vatazon. Let me try that again. Geist Vatazon. Vatazun. <laughs> I will put out the pronunciation on the screen. 